Hello, everybody. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Woo! OK, so most of you don't know me. My name is Allison Irwin. Lucas Wilfer is my youngest brother in a family of five siblings. When he was a baby, I took pride in taking care of him while my parents worked on our farm and took on the roles of motherhood with him at the age of 10. I really just wanted him to like me best. Growing up, Lucas was always the goofy and funny child of the group. He would do anything for a laugh, and the more we laughed, the goofier he would be. Growing up, we always had a lot of family time together on the farm. We spent a lot of time working at the local farmer markets together, as well as in our family greenhouse and out in the vegetable fields. I knew even when he was young that Lucas was a driven per person with a great purpose. He was always very involved with school, sports, FFA, and 4-H. When Lucas announced that he was going to run for FFA state office, I was thrilled and nervous for him. As a past FFA member, I knew how much it meant to him to succeed. I knew he would be extremely disappointed if he wasn't elected. I was so excited for him when I heard that he made the team and was elected for the 2015-2016 state FFA Sentinel. I am so proud of how far he has come and how far he has yet to go. I know he will always make us proud. I am so proud to announce Lucas Wilfer as your state sentinel for his retiring address. Thank you. Hello, my name is Johanna Lentz, and I'm also Lucas's older sister and FFA advisor. Many of you in this room today have gotten a chance to meet Lucas Wilfert. And if you don't know who I'm talking about by now, he's the tall blonde guy on the officer team, and occasionally he wears a cowboy hat. You might have seen that. As his older sister and former FFA advisor, I hope I'm allowed to say these things about him. And uh, Allison, I don't know if he likes you best or not, but I, I'm trying my hardest. Lucas has always had a love for cultivating crops and raising animals. This is evident from the moment you meet him. Growing up on a small diversified farm, he had an opportunity to experience many facets of agriculture. He would be the kid out pulling weeds in the field, mucking out stalls in the barn, or greeting customers in the greenhouse. His unique background with plants, animals, and people has led him to this stage today. I am proud of Lucas's accomplishments as an FFA member and remembering all those late nights working on science fair projects, my students, you know what I'm talking about with glue dots, traveling to events and competitions, filling out application after application, it was time well spent. Even though his state FFA journey is ending, he will continue to be an agriculture advocate for the rest of his life. I am pleased to announce Lucas Wilvert as your state sentinel for his retiring address. We love you, brother. Good morning. My name is Cassie Hartzell Conrad, and I'm an ag teacher and FFA advisor. In each of our lives, we have many first. There are events that we will remember forever. It might be the first time you played a sport, the first time you showed in 4 H, or the first time you put on your blue and gold jacket. Taylor Williams. You will always be special to me because I got to share many of those first with you. The biggest one, you becoming my first state officer. From the first day you walked into my classroom, I knew you were the real deal. You introduced yourself and said you would work hard for the class and organization, that you would try anything I set your way at least once. You were as real as they come. You did just that. You said you wanted to show a cow at the, and a lamb at the fair, and you did. And you worked so hard, you went in your first year at St. Joe County Fair, and you won both species. You said you wanted to be a state officer, and here you are. You said you would serve the state to your fullest ability, and you have. You said you would be a friend to anybody that you met, and you're the best kind of friend, because you know what? You're the real deal. This past year, you have served the Michigan FFA and its members to your fullest ability. You have made Michigan FFA and Region 1 better by being a leader and serving. Thank you. 
Good morning. I'm Jenny Grossenbacher, Taylor's mom. Intelligent, caring, determined, and real. Just some words I would use to describe my daughter. From the time she was little, she has had a love of animals, learning new things, and taking on new challenges. After joining FFA her junior year in high school, she decided she wanted to learn something new. Her new challenge would be showing dairy feeder calves and sheep. When she approached me with this, my response was, how are you paying for this and where will you keep them? Her response was, I'll figure it out. Well, she figured it out. Her first year, she earned Grand Champion Lightweight and Reserve Grand Champion overall. Last year, she reserved the honor of Senior Showman, resulting in the opportunity to show in sweepstakes. Every new challenge she accepts, she does with determination and effort. Needless to say, I was not surprised when she came home and announced she was running for a state FFA officer position. Being the mom that knows if she wants to make it happen, she will. My response was, okay, have fun with that. That is just what she has done. This past year has been a great, fun, learning experience that she will carry with her for the rest of her life. Michigan, Michigan FFA, FFA, our, our daughter, daughter, and your Region, Region 1 State, State Vice, Vice President, President, Taylor Williams. Lucas. Oh, Lucas. What do you want, Taylor? The national truck and tractor poles are on. I mean, let me tell you about these diesel pro stocks, turbochargers on those pro stock semis, and of course, the DOT tires. Oh, Taylor, the national finals rodeo is on. They're about to decide the world champion bareback rider. I mean, all those supercharged Dodge Power Maxes, if that's what you call them, you sound really cool and all. But you know how I am with my rodeo. I can tell you all about staying square, lifting on that rope, and how to make the big bucks. Only if you want to, of course. Lucas Matthew, you have got to be kidding me. I'd take my truck pulls over your rodeo any day. Let me hear a big yeehaw if you love a good rodeo. Yeehaw! How many Luke Collins fans do we have out here, be honest? So about a year and a half ago, I made what my parents call the worst decision of my life. I got my start in the bloody, the painful, the exciting American sport we call bull riding. Well, my family and peers still strongly disagree with my newfound passion, saying it's too dangerous and I could get seriously hurt competing. But let me tell you, nothing beats an eight second adrenaline rush where your heart is pounding, you're making split second riding decisions, and everything is happening so fast. I love it so much, so I have continued to stick with it. Freshman year, I really wasn't sure what my thing was. I mean, if you consider being a Twilight movie marathon buff an enjoyable thing, well then you can count me in. Four days into the school year, a good friend of mine talked me into joining our school's girls golf team with her. And let me tell you, the first thought I had of golf may have been, <clears throat> Happy Gilmore. I mean, this was a sport I had never seen before, never played before. Was it truly even a sport? I was the tough, rub some dirt on it farm girl who knew the most random facts about seed corn, but couldn't tell you the difference between my pitching wedge and my sand wedge. And yes, there is a difference. Since the first time I sat down on a bull's back and nodded my head for the go, I've rode around 100 bulls. Now, out of these bulls, there's been spinners, there's been jump kickers, there's been ranked bulls, and what people call just plain out good ones. These are the ones that spin and jump and kick in every which way and direction before you finally boo, fall off. Since I'm an amateur, I figured I'd stay safe and ride the nice and easy ones, you know, so I don't hurt myself. But there's been times where I almost didn't ride. I would let the bull and my fear keep me from being true to myself and my passion. It was the evening of the St. Joseph County Fair Super Kickers Rodeo that turned my safe hobby into a dangerous one. 
As my buddies and I got entered in at the rodeo, I drew a bull named Who Do You Love? Knowing that he's a higher level of bull, I've never rode or experienced before. After I said my prayers, my bull was loaded into the chutes, and I was up next. The day of my first high school golf match finally came, and the only thought on my mind was getting the lowest score. If you didn't know, in golf, you want the lowest score you can get. As I made my way out to hole number four, which was a par five, in golf lingo that means they think it should take you five shots to get the ball from the tee all the way to the cup. My score? 12. Such a beautiful number. <laughs> but then I thought about it. If you shoot 12 on all 18 holes, that's a 216. And that isn't such a beautiful number. This was the only thing going through my mind as I made my way off to the next hole. This crazy train is rocking over the loudspeakers. I get my rope on that bowl, heat up, tie in, and sit down. Before I knew it, I was out in the arena, landing right on my back. I look up, and the big black 1,600 pound beast is charging right for me. With no time for a clean getaway, I stick my feet up in the bowl heads. With one hoof landing right on my hand, and the other just barely missing my face. As I get up, and run to the fence in agonizing pain, I couldn't help but give the cheering stadium a big thumbs up and a smile. Though I had just experienced the scariest moment of my life, I smiled. The end of the day came and I went to turn in my scorecard to see what placing I would receive. 10 minutes later, I walked up to see my name written across the board and my placing dead last. That's right, I had placed dead last. The tears were quickly to follow as I felt like I had let down my coach, but most importantly, my team. But you see, my team soon rallied around me, and they told me I would get it next time. Next time came and went, match after match, practice after practice. I went from scores of 220 to scores of 72, from dead last to captain of the team, and from wanting to quit to competing in the state championships. Sometimes our biggest fears will lead us to failure, but only we can change that. Only we can turn our biggest fears into our biggest accomplishments. Keeping it real isn't about going with the same flow, wearing the same style, or even hanging out with the same friends. It's about stepping out of our comfort zones, charging through the doorway of potential, and accomplishing the things we've always aimed to be. Comfortable. Comfortable means we aren't testing ourselves. We aren't giving ourselves the opportunity to grow. But fear? Fear means our hands are clammy, our adrenaline is pumping, sweat is just dripping down our face <coughs> like it's 100 degrees outside, and we're facing what seems to be a monster right in the eyes. Whether we walk away from this monster and go back to our normal lives, or we face it and conquer it head on is our decision. I keep it real by competing to get to the top. And it may be hard to do, and there is no perfect journey to get there. But once we discover our inner confidence and keep it real, nothing can stop us. Keeping it real isn't about being the best at a sport, having the newest iPhone, or having the hottest wardrobe, but about doing something in life that truly makes you happy. Nobody understood why I, the country girl, would continue to play golf. But you see, through all the hardships and struggles, I had to keep it real with myself by continuing to play, because it was something that truly made me happy. Always remember to keep it real with yourself by doing the things that suits you and not what suits others. A meaningful life isn't being rich or popular, but being real and humble, and being able to share yourself and touch the lives of others. 
Let this be a quote that we take with us for our days to come. Whether it's FFA, 4-H, school, business, sports, or anything else, this can be a quote that impacts us every single day. Whether you're on the back of a bull, or playing around on that golf course, with friends, or with family, Michigan FFA, we must always keep, keep it, it real. real. Taylor, thank you for making sure we are always prepared, from texting us the night or even the hour before a meeting, and making sure we have a bounty of snacks so our tummies are never hungry. You are the friend that everyone needs, and thank you for being our friend. Michigan FFA, our Region 1 State Vice President, Taylor Williams. Lucas, AKA Lukey Poo. <laughs> Over this past year, I have seen you grow so much as an individual. You have always been there for each and every one of us whenever we were in a time of need or we just needed someone to talk to. You were that bright, bright face that we could always look to to cheer us up. I am so proud to say that this year, you are not only my best friend, but also my brother. Michigan FFA, our state sentinel, Lucas Wilfert. 